Hello, everybody. Hi. So, you're hopefully here for the MediaWiki presentation, because if you're not, then I'm not giving the other talk, because they apparently moved some rooms around, which is always fun. Uh, but if you're in the right room, or if you think this might be fun anyway, then by all means stick around, because I hope it will be fun. So, MediaWiki, we're doing stuff. It's good. Oh, this actually works. I'm pleased. Yeah, is anybody else using one of these fun little netbooks? Anybody? Anybody? Everybody's just thinking about getting them? One, two. Ah, yeah. I ah, see one back there. Awesome. I'm really happy with this thing. Tiny little Dell. It actually like fits on an airline tray table. So I could actually like open it and, and do stuff on it. My previous computer, I could open it enough to get at the keyboard, but not to get at the keyboard and see what I was typing at the same time. Kind of not good. Okay, MediaWiki. Hopefully you know what MediaWiki is. If you don't, uh, now's your chance. MediaWiki is the fun, awesome wiki engine that we created way back in the ancient year of 2002, specifically to run Wikipedia. Wikipedia actually started in 2001. Um, so there was a Wikipedia before MediaWiki, but there was no MediaWiki before Wikipedia. It's free open software, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't be here at the free open software conference. And uh, we've been using GPL version two. We're still on GPL version two, who knows? GPL version three may happen someday. Everyone thinks it's kind of weird and scary. We run on a pretty much you know standard kind of lamp stuff. Uh, and we scale anywhere from your crazy little home install or your shared hosting account that offers, you know, super cheap, super free, we have MySQL and PHP onto, you know, the crazy super farm installations that we have at Wikipedia or Wikia or uh, all kinds of other uh, big hosting sites that run, you know, hundreds or thousands of wikis and do all their crazy things with multiple servers and multiple database servers and multiple kinds of servers and 10 layers of caching and insane stuff that most people don't have to worry about. Lucky them. Wikipedia, uh, probably you've heard of it. If you haven't, um, then maybe you haven't been on the internet for a while. It's an open content encyclopedia. Free, wonderful, we love sharing, blah, blah, blah. The actual content is all created by the volunteer community, just sort of popping up, doing cool stuff. Uh, so if you see anything on Wikipedia that you don't like, please don't call us at the office in San Francisco, because we didn't actually write it. Uh, everything's running on open source software, top to bottom. A lot of stuff that we've written ourselves, such as MediaWiki and various little fun tools for uh, certain kinds of monitoring, load balancing, blah, blah, blah. And then a bunch of standard stuff all your, you know, your regular LAMP stuff and uh, squid proxy for our uh, HTTP caching, um, all kinds of fun things. We've been contributing back patches to, you know, all those things that we use. Um, we love it to bits. And all the custom software that we write is done in an open source manner uh, with a combination of staff developers, volunteer developers, third party contractors, whatever, but all working in an open uh, subversion repository, open bug tracker, open mailing lists, all that fun stuff. Um, we like it. Meet Wiki Foundation. Uh, you may or may not have heard of us. We are the actual silly company that performs the operation of Wikipedia. We're not writing it, we're just running the servers and uh, providing some of the infrastructure and fun stuff around that. Uh, we actually formed it as a nonprofit company in 2003 after a couple of years of just sort of, you know, stuff being around. Um, when you're just starting up a new project, it's very easy to just, you know, you, you just throw it up, you throw it up on a few servers and see what happens and then eventually, you know, there are legal questions or questions about, you know, what's going to happen in the future, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and that's where uh, you, you start to do all these actual organization creation. It actually took a couple years from 2003 on to get to the point where there wasn't just like one person in the foundation. Uh, so I was actually brought on as I think the first employee in 2005, two years after we started the company. 
Um, and we're only now getting to the point where we have more than like three people on the tech staff. We now have um, five in-house developers, a couple system administrators, and then several additional uh, uh, contract workers, which we were generally taking out of the existing volunteer development community, which is something that we absolutely love to be able to do, supporting our, con our, our contributors back in actually, you know, seriously working on creating the awesome things that we use. And just to get a general idea of the size of our operation, our budget for this fiscal year, entire budget for the entire company, about $6 million. That's not a huge amount of money for what is um, a very, very large website uh, in terms of the, uh, I believe, Comscore statistics, all of our websites together make up something like the number four total website, and we're just behind like Yahoo and Google and uh, something else. I don't know, maybe AOL. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Believe it or not, people still use them. Ah, back to software. So, way back when, 2001, we actually started using a pre-existing wiki engine, which was UseModWiki. Now, the wonderful thing about UseMod is it's really easy to install. It's a single Perl script. Bam, single Perl script, put it on your server, set up a CGI, have a director you can write to. Wow, you got a wiki. It's awesome. And for better or for worse, um, our mockup has derived from UseMod system. So we have kind of you know weird little things for um, the way that we do bold and italic and links and blah, blah, blah. And that all derives out of the UseMod system. So we ma maintain pretty much compatibility with that over the years. But sometimes it's kind of quirky and kind of weird. And then, of course, we've extended it in fun, bizarre ways to add tables and templates. And, and so there's you know, much scariness in the markup. But that's the wonders of backwards compatibility. Now, the basic problem with UseMod um, was that it just really wasn't built to scale. For a small site, just fine. But when, you know, after about a year, we got to, you know, 10, 20,000 pages, we had a lot of people editing simultaneously, the system didn't really have a good way of protecting against multiple people editing simultaneously. It theoretically did. It had a lock file. And whenever someone was actually making a save, it, it saved the lock file, and then you would wait until the lock file was removed, and then somebody else would save. But sometimes it would forget to remove the lock file. So it would just sort of break for a few hours until someone went in and fixed it. Fun little stuff like that. Um, so we went ahead and decided to create some specific software just for Wikipedia that would be developed specifically for our needs. Uh, this was built initially by uh, Magnus Mansky, a uh, volunteer developer from Germany, who uh, you know, went ahead and just said, OK, you know, We've been talking about this for ages. I'm just going to do it. So I went in, built it uh, you know, using the PHP MySQL stack. Um, a lot of us who were kind of poking around at it, it was really our first big PHP project. Uh, and some of us, well, we didn't really know what we were doing. And so it was really very exciting and, and fun and new. And once we deployed the first version in, uh, in February 2002, about a year after Wikipedia started, uh, we found that, well, it sort of worked. Uh, we actually had serious performance problems with it because, well, we forgot to put indexes on the tables and, you know, little newbie mistakes like that. Um, so it ended up kind of getting totally rewritten based on our, actually exper our, our actual experience having deployed it, what was good, what was bad, what needed to be redone. Uh, and by July, um, Lee Daniel Crocker uh, and a few others of us had just sort of poked it around and completely redone it. Uh, so it was built on a similar model as that initial version of the PHP code, but everything just a little bit different and a little bit more geared towards efficiency. Uh, the downside with this is that I had to add Unicode support back in three times on each version of the software. That kind of sucked. But the good news was that it was actually a workable code base, and we've actually been developing that same code base ever since. Uh, and it evolved into what is today's MediaWiki, uh, which has become a little more general than just the Wikipedia script, as we originally called it. 
So over time, we started adding um, things like an actual installer that people could use to install the software. The original version, you had to be running as root on your server to install MediaWiki and run a command line script which copied the files into the right location and if you did anything wrong, it broke and destroyed your site. Uh, so that was kind of not good. So once we had you know, a, a basic little web-friendly installer, you know, it's not the greatest thing ever, but it works. People are able to actually set it up as a third-party site. Um, we had um, a few people come in and redo the UI. Uh, we went from, uh, I don't have any screenshots with me, unfortunately, but our old UI was very plain, very drab, um, very kind of hideous. Our new UI is very pretty, or at least it's you know pretty for 2003, 2004. Probably needs a few improvements now. Uh, we redid the d database schema to be more efficient for scalability issues. Uh, we removed a lot of the hard-coded instances of Wikipedia in the user interface. So now if you're not Wikipedia, it actually makes sense to use MediaWiki. Now, over the years, we have seen a lot of increase in activity in um, the actual development of the software. So I've got a little graph here of commits to our subversion server for each month from 2001, when actually it was a CVS server, all the way down to this last month. Um, you know, back in the olden days, we had a few commits. Now we're getting to where we're over a thousand commits every month just on MediaWiki and its associated projects. And not only do we have this increase in total commits, we have an increase in the number of people actually doing the activity, uh, actually doing the, the contributions. We had a few contributors back in the day. Uh, last month we actually had, it looks like 59 individual people making a commit during that month. Uh, so that's a lot of people doing some specialized work, uh, working on maybe a particular extension, or working just on localization issues, or working just on the installer. We have a guy who pretty much just does um, updates to our uh, Lucene-based search engine, all kinds of things, both on the core and the extensions to MediaWiki, huge amount of activity going on. So we've seen this, this big growth in the actual development community, uh, which has pluses and minuses. So one of the minuses, of course, is that the core developers, uh, who are actually um, you know, those of us employed by Wikimedia to make sure that MediaWiki exists and does the needs of Wikipedia, well, we haven't really increased that much. There's still just a very small number of us. Um, and we have a limited amount of attention, unfortunately. And we're still kind of scattered, not always getting as much done as we want. So a lot of our core attention in the last few years has been on scaling, performance, uh, specific features that Wikimedia needs, like, oh, we need to make sure our fundraiser works. We need to you know, do a bunch of stuff to make sure that this whole fundraiser season works, because otherwise, you know, if we don't run our fundraiser at the end of the year, we're going to run out of money and not be able to run the site. That's kind of bad. So that becomes a priority, and suddenly we're not able to do something else. Um, of course, in the last year, we've finally gotten to the point where we've been able to hire a few more people on in the core area. Uh, so, Tom, where are you sitting? You're hiding in there. There's Tomas back there. Awesome dude. Tomas worked on our fundraiser stuff this year so that I didn't have to. I was able to do other stuff. Yeah! That was good. So, we're able now to do a little more things. Uh, sort of maintain more stuff, have fewer bottlenecks in the central, uh, central core developers, but still kind of working on it. Um, one of those things that I've been doing um, is late last year I created a code review extension to MediaWiki, which, oops, it's a little funky there. There we go. Which basically integrates in, um, 
our updates, uh, all the commits into the subversion system into the wiki for um, review in there. <laughs> and yes, that's Cben right there. Wow, you've been committing a lot. You've been busy. So we've got a uh, you know nice little list of everything that's going in, uh, and then people are able to mark that reviewed or not reviewed or problematic. Uh, let's see if I can find something a little more exciting. There we go. So here we have a problem commit, which was identified by people you know while I was. Uh, when was this? Yeah, I was on a plane or something. So, you know, I didn't actually have to review this myself. Other people went ahead and took a look over it. Blah, 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 blah. We have comments down there. People encounter problems. And it's been marked as fixed. And if I log in, I could actually probably go ahead and, and mark it as no longer being a fix me. But uh, I don't think I have to do that because I think you guys can do it. So that's pretty awesome, uh, helping to reduce the uh, bottlenecks there. And uh oh, looks like I've fallen back out. Where, where am I? There we go. Yes, yeah, so Open Office Presenter is still a little new and exciting to me. I'm actually for the first time in quite a while, switching my presentations back to Linux from my old Mac. I love my Mac, but it's just too damn big. Uh, netbooks are great. So what's going on right now? We have, uh, we're starting to put these code review processes into place. It's helping, but we're still seeing some problems. Um, we're starting to do a actual scheduled code review sequence where every week, every Tuesday, I'll go ahead and make sure I run through everything that's been going on, fix up any remaining problems, and push it out live. And I'm seeing that going through a week's worth of stuff actually takes all day, um, which is kind of bad because then if I miss a week, it takes two days, um, which is a long time. So we definitely still want to uh, have some improvements in the processes there, but we have now stuff in place to be able to share a lot of those responsibilities. There is a quarterly release, 1.14 of MiniWiki. Imminent, Tim is working on it right now, pushing out that release. It should be pretty awesome. And we have a bunch of extensions uh, that are being worked on right now uh, by folks in the office and elsewhere uh, that we're gonna be pushing out pretty soon. Uh, edit drafts, um, we're also putting in a abuse filter um, extension, which is able to sort of re-integrate uh, re a lot of the uh, basic uh, identification and tagging of problematic edits that are you know, very specific repeatable patterns and can be seen very easily and either just stopping them outright or tagging them for human review in a uh, somewhat easier fashion. So big stuff coming up. One of the big things we're going to be doing this year, we started the Wikipedia Usability Project. We've got a uh, grant from uh, the Stanton Foundation to go ahead and hire a couple of additional people specifically to do this. So we have, um, uh, we are currently hiring for a uh, interaction designer to do usability testing and actual, um, you know, specific design and just review of user interface problems going on. Uh, and a couple of developers specifically to implement that stuff, and most importantly, to actually find what's already out there that we can go ahead and pull in with relatively little work. There's a lot of extensions, customizations, uh, additions that have already been done uh, based on either usability testing specifically, uh, such as the UniWiki extensions, and um, uh, some tests that have been sponsored in the past by some German universities, um, custom uh, setups on various third-party sites, Wikia, WikiHow, uh, lots of others. A lot of those that we can pull in either directly or use it as an inspiration to finalize something that will actually uh, fix up our needs. Um, so being able to have dedicated resources to pull in existing stuff and to do actual testing to make sure, yeah, this really works. 
is going to be very, very helpful. Another big thing we've got going on is um, some video projects sponsored uh, by Kaltura with the uh, Metavid project. Um, we've got uh, Michael Dale and some others doing some advanced work with Octiora based video um, using free codecs and the um, new AUG support that's going to be in Firefox 2.1 gives us additional um, assurance that yes, we will have real free video on the web and we can do awesome, awesome things. There's a um, online video sequencer that's being worked on as well as simply being able to uh, more actively uh, grab existing videos, search both uh, within our own sites on Wikimedia Commons and to pull in um, freely licensed files from other sites such as the Internet Archive, um, sites such as Flickr that have appropriate tagging of freely licensed images and videos, all kinds of awesome stuff going on. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to start rolling some of that out later this year. So what else is going on? There are a huge number of awesome, awesome things that have been going on in the MediaWiki space for quite some time. Uh, one of the coolest projects out there is Semantic MediaWiki, uh, which is an extension to MediaWiki which adds um, capabilities to uh, store data relationships between articles, based on articles, um, and then being able to query that data back, display things in useful tables, display sensible lists. Uh, this has the potential on a site like Wikipedia to eliminate a lot of the sort of manual drudgery in maintenance of certain kinds of lists, information tables, uh, sharing of data between articles, possibly between uh, different language sites if appropriately set up. Uh, lots of fun, cool stuff. Uh, it's been worked on for several years. It's very mature. We would love to be able to actually start integrating this. So uh, in the next few months, we'll, we should be able to set up some you know, actual testing uh, of you know, what are the actual needs uh, as far as you know, is it going to impact the database? Is it going to impact scalability? We know that this stuff is awesome. We know that we want it. Let's make it happen. So. Semantic Media Wiki, uh, better support for Translate Wiki uh, or Beta Wiki. There's a lot of um, localization going on from all these awesome people. Uh, pretty much as soon as I've made a commit, there's a translation in like five languages. Uh, sometimes before I make my next commit, there's already something in Hebrew for my last commit. Then there's six versions of. Uh, German and Chinese and who knows what else. Uh, tends to get kind of fun. It's pretty exciting. And there's a lot of other you know, little bits and pieces, uh, form editors, uh, improvements for working with tables, multiple sections, little WYSIWYG bits. Uh, lots of things that we either want or think we could use uh, that we're going to be finding and adapting. Uh, now one project that I like to look at here and there is WordPress, uh, which is a fairly well-known open source blogging software. Uh, like MediaWiki, it's open source based on a LAMP stack, uh, is frequently thought of as being too big and bloated, uh, and yet it often seems to be best of breed in many situations and there's billions of people using it. Uh, WordPress has been making a lot of progress over the last year. Uh, they've been actually doing big pushes on usability, uh, fixing up their user interface, identifying real problems with usage, and uh, doing public mock-ups of new user interfaces, surveying people to see what kind of works, actually doing some user testing, uh, and just generally getting people very involved in the process of making new things happen. Uh, I've been very excited to see that. Every time I upgrade my blog, suddenly the uh, administrator console is a billion times easier to use. If we can get that going on MediaWiki, I'll be very happy. Uh, back at the home office, yeah, pretty much already said most of this. Uh, we're hiring, or have been hiring a, a few more people to uh, you know, do some of the dirty work. So 
basically what we're doing within, uh, within Wikimedia itself. Our names are all too similar. It gets confusing. It's primarily just making sure that MeWiki itself still works, making sure it works for us with scalability, and then doing specific projects that we ourselves need um, based on some identified strategic need. So there's a lot of uh, the additional third-party development which is going on, which we love and want to encourage more and more of. Um, in addition to the usability project where we want not just our core team in San Francisco working on that, but we also want everybody who's a volunteer developer to be pitching in, everybody who's a user to be pitching in with their comments, um, and actually really you know, get a community voice in there as well as just a few guys saying, well, I think it looks good if we move this over there. That's not what we want. We want a real dynamic project that is a big, awesome community thing. We're also uh, looking at the possibilities of doing more kind of intern style projects as well as um, some of the specific project uh, contracting that we've been doing of trying to uh, support people who are doing volunteer development, kind of bring more people in and be able to you know, really get specific projects going so that not only does something get started, but it gets finished and integrated once it's uh, usable. So overall, what is it that Wikimedia wants? Well, our general organization, organizational goals, which sound pretty boring, are organizational maturity, financial stability, increase of quality and perception of quality, increasing distribution beyond the wikis, and encouraging and broadening participation. Really, these are pretty straightforward things. Um, insofar as they apply to the technical world, which I'm in control of, um, organizational maturity is primarily about making sure that we actually know what we're doing. Making sure that on the uh, level of hardware and systems that we have stuff in place, not just able to run the site, but um, appropriate backups and redundancy. You know, makes sense. Um, also, on the coder level, it means that we want to make sure that people who are contributing code feel welcome, that they feel like their code is welcome, um, that contributions are not being ignored, patches are getting reviewed, extensions that are useful are getting enabled, uh, new sites and configuration updates that need to be done for some community actually get done. Uh, this is still somewhat of an ongoing process, but uh, it's very much one of the things we want to accomplish. Uh, additionally, uh, in those general goals, one of the big things is broadening participation for users on the wiki end, uh, increasing our reach, broadening our depth to uh, get more and more people involved on the wiki sites. Uh, we're trying to broaden participation, make it easy for people to come in and contribute something. Um, traditionally, you know, in the wiki world, the way that you contribute is you edit. You go onto the article, you click edit, you, you know, punch in some information, you fix something that was wrong, maybe Maybe you add a comment to the discussion page. Um, but honestly, that's a pretty high burden, uh, uh, a pretty high bar for, for a lot of newbies to reach. Uh, just because, you know, it's not really obvious how some of this stuff works. And even if we make, you know, wonderful WYSIWYG editing that everyone understands, just the idea of going into a discussion page on a wiki and adding your comment, it's not really obvious how it works. So we're interested in easier ways for people to just contribute a little something. Maybe instead of you know, going in and adding a comment on a fancy ass wiki page, maybe they can just say, you know, I like this article. Maybe they can say, I didn't like this article. Maybe they can say, oh, I like this article except for this bit. Or just kind of you know, describe what needs to be done on this. It needs some attention. And uh, maybe they can add a little text comment but in a way that's easier for people to participate in um, without necessarily being hardcore wiki user. Uh, 
uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I said. But also part of that is um, when people are starting to actually do the editing, uh, they frequently encounter uh, problems with other parts of the community. So, of course, every online community has trolls and people who are just, who mean well, but they're very rude. Uh, and, and this is a problem in, in any kind of online community, and certainly Wikipedia is not at all immune to that. Um, so we're going to need to see some improvements on perhaps the social front of making sure that good behavior is encouraged, bad behavior dis is discouraged. Uh, this isn't always easy because um, inward-facing um, communities often can self-perpetuate some of that. Uh, so if you're a newbie, you don't understand the jargon, uh, you don't understand you know, what's going on, so somebody kind of pops up out of nowhere and says you know, that you violated uh, you know, NPOV, RFA3, whatever, you, know, you don't know what the hell that is. I've been around for years, I don't know, necessarily know what the hell it is. Um, that's not too good. So a little of that maybe, you know, some actual technical solutions can help to smooth out the workflow, smooth out the process, make it easier for people to not have to actually butt heads when they're interacting. But a lot of it is actually going to need some real social change that is maybe outside the scope of uh, just the technical area. I already said Semantic Media Wiki is awesome, but it bears repeating. Um, it's a good thing. Ah, flagged revisions. One of the other things that we've been uh, running experimentally uh, for quite some time, um, and we finally started deploying it live on uh, German Wikipedia a few months ago, is the flagged revision system. And it's one of these little additions to the wiki workflow, uh, where we take the ability to take a version of an article that we think is pretty good, and mark it as saying, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, and then maybe for just some visitor who comes in and doesn't know what's going on, maybe you'll actually get shown the, yeah, it's pretty good version, instead of the, eh, don't know about this yet version. Or at the least, you'll have some indication that, yes, there are multiple versions, and, and you know, we know this one has been reviewed, this one has not. So it helps to expose a little bit of the wacky editing process of uh, you know, what's current and what isn't, uh, which, as a reader, isn't necessarily very obvious. Uh, somebody who just sort of pops onto Wikipedia maybe doesn't quite understand that what it says right now isn't maybe what it said five minutes ago and isn't maybe what Wikipedia says. Um, so being able to uh, just sort of self-moderate and, and kind of speed bump certain types of edits, in theory, uh, allows us to improve the actual quality and perhaps the perceived quality of um, a wiki site uh, by indicating that, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, but there are also some problems in that uh, it does slow down some of the workflow. It creates uh, additional requirements to go around and make sure that things are reviewed. Um, we've had reports that there's you know, a bit of a backlog at German Wikipedia. Uh, there is some interest, in, uh, some interest in deploying some variant of flag divisions on the English language Wikipedia, which is, uh, as the most popular one, also the most likely to run into uh, certain kinds of problems with people going, oh, my article says something scary about me. Um, but we want to make sure that we actually solve some of those workflow problems. So that's still an ongoing thing. Definitely want continued community involvement with um, figuring out what's actually going on on that. Uh, but flag revisions has primarily been, uh, oops, I didn't uh, check my details there. I don't remember who actually was working on that. What's that, Perona? Awesome. Cool. That, that's good. I, I'm glad that my memory is correct. That's always a, a happy thing. Anyway, it's been uh, primarily maintained the last few months by uh, Aaron Schultz, one of our contract workers who's uh, come out of our volunteer development community. Awesome stuff. We love it. Uh, one of the other things that we've been testing, and we're going to uh, start doing some more deployment very soon, the abuse filter extension. Uh, there's a whole bunch of cool new features in it, which 
unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to deploy this week or I would be showing it to you right now. Um, but it adds the ability to tag edits as they come in with um, a certain kind of uh, you know, tag based on you know, uh, some element of what the edit was. It contained certain types of text. It uh, you know, removed large amounts of text. You know, it looks like a certain kind of vandalism, whatever. Uh, so in addition to just being able to automatically revert something, which is what a lot of the third-party bot tools are doing now, uh, we can do more traditional wiki soft security models by tagging things for human review. So maybe they'll get seen immediately, maybe they'll get seen in a few minutes, but by being able to tag them, uh, we actually create an environment where someone can go in and specifically pay more attention to the problem edits instead of having to review every single thing individually. Um, and that's being developed right now by Andrew Garrett, another one of our um, uh, longtime volunteer developers who's uh, now doing some contract work for us. Uh, he's actually out in San Francisco right now visiting, and we, we've been able to uh, do some uh, uh, very tight review cycles uh, and do get a lot of stuff done in a short amount of time. That's been really, really fun. Uh, and it's definitely one of, one of the things that's encouraging me to uh, look more into kind of internship programs, maybe bringing people out for you know, a little time to remain office and just do some really uh, serious hack fest stuff. Uh, I went a little bit into uh, the media stuff already, but that's some awesome things. An additional part of that uh, is we're now... Um, uh, administering a uh, grant from the Mozilla Foundation. Uh, it's either the Mozilla Foundation or the Mozilla Corporation. I forget which one. They all blur together to me. Uh, but one of them Mozilla guys um, to improve some of the Ogthiora and Ogvorbis support in uh, Firefox, both the base libraries, um, which not only Firefox, but a lot of other tools are using, uh, and the advanced encoder, uh, which will um, allow the non-patent encumbered Thero format to actually really be pretty much head-to-head -head in terms of quality with uh, things like MPEG-4, uh, whereas traditionally it's been thought to be yeah, not quite as good because the first generation encoder was not quite as good. The advanced encoder is starting to use uh, features of the Theora standard which were added after the original version of the encoder was made but they're in the baseline Theora 1.0 spec as it was finalized, and now the code is actually starting to catch up. Um, so we're helping to sponsor, you know, making sure that stuff actually gets done. Um, much better support for free, uh, for free video on the web. We love it, Mozilla loves it. It's all, all a big love fest. Also, we, uh, we keep looking at mobile stuff. Because uh, a lot of people these days have stuff like this little guy, or maybe if they're you know not into evil proprietary Apple stuff, maybe they have a uh, Android-based machine or uh, something else. Uh, there's all kinds of fun devices these days. Um, also, a lot of the fun uh, Linux-based tablets, uh, like the little Nokia A10, all kinds of cool stuff. But basic thing is they're relatively small. They have a small screen and they have some kind of crazy internet connection. It's pretty cool. So very frequently, you know, we're out at lunch in San Francisco from the office, uh, talking some kind of bull crap. Somebody says something or other, somebody else denies it's true. If only there was some way we could look it up, some kind of website. Well, we can, thanks to the internet. So for some time, we've had a uh, semi-experimental mobile gateway. Uh, it's currently at mobile.wikipedia.org. Um, but the version of the code that it's uh, currently based on has been originally targeted to older kind of, you know, watt-based uh, devices, which is the older mobile phones which can get on the internet, but no one really knows how or wants to if they do. So people have never really used it very much. But this latest generation of awesome new internet devices that have real browsers, 
uh, such as the WebKit-based browsers in the iPhone, um, the Android system. E even current Blackberries have a kind of okay browser. Uh, are a lot more capable. Uh, download speeds are faster. Uh, they can actually do things like show CSS and images and run some JavaScript, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, so we're now working on a more capable system, uh, which currently we have um, in a test rollout on m.wikipedia.org, and we'll eventually start merging the two of them, uh, which is much more advanced. Uh, it's based on the original server component from the IPedia or IWIC um, iPhone application, uh, which was created by Hampton Catlin, uh, using a lot of Ruby-based stuff. Uh, he's open-sourced it for us, uh, and we're now uh, currently doing some testing for going ahead and building that out as an official iPhone application, and then we're going to roll it out to other platforms as well. Um, Android, maybe Blackberry, you know, whatever, whatever else uh, we can see support on. But the primary part of it is the server-side component, which does some reformatting and produces um, this very nice HTML page, uh, which uses uh, um, actual modern stuff, which a modern browser can render very nicely. Uh, and there's just you know, a little bit of a native UI that you can wrap around that for uh, a little happier things, which can integrate a little nicer. But even just, just the server-side uh, web component, awesome. We're having a great time with that. Um, that's currently being developed uh, via GitHub rather than our subversion, so that's a fun little experiment. Uh, and there's an IRC channel if you want to pop right now on freenode.net into Wikimedia Mobile. Uh, may or may not be anyone awake, but there may be some folks in there. Uh, so that's an ongoing, cool, awesome project. Uh, currently, the mobile stuff is mostly just for reading. Uh, and reading Wikipedia is good, but contributing back is good, too. Um, it's kind of a pain right now, you know, if you're on your, your iPhone or your G1 and you pop onto the regular Wikipedia site, you can, in fact, edit. You can, you can click the Edit tab and, and go into this giant text box and type some stuff in, but man, you really don't want to. It's a pain. The Edit box is like this big and your screen is this big. Um, yeah, that doesn't work very well. But there can be a lot of usefulness to being able to contribute. I often found, find that uh, I'll run into a typo or something while I'm reading something on the road. So, you know, I like to be able to go in and fix it. Also, maybe uh, you're traveling, maybe uh, you find an article in some place, there's no photograph, you want to be able to take a picture of it, upload it, add a little description, stuff like that. Currently, we don't have any native support for that. We would love to add it. So hopefully that's something that we'll be able to get going. Uh, and if there's people excited about it, dude, come on, let's make it happen. So in general, we have uh, a lot of things that we want to pay attention to. Uh, not just cool new things for the future, but stuff that actually is a problem now. Um, so we want to pay a little more attention to you know, what, what are the problems that people are having. Uh, both within Wikipedia and for third-party users. Um, now, Mozilla runs, for instance, a whole bunch of different uh, community-facing uh, sites for you know, various different targets, uh, and they run on various different technologies. Some of them are uh, specifically built, some of them are wikis, some of them are blogs, some of them are forums. Um, one of the wiki sites uh, that Mozilla's had for some time is Mozilla Dev Center, um, or MDC, which is uh, primarily developer-targeted documentation on HTML, JavaScript, all that stuff. Um, it was originally running on MediaWiki. Last year, uh, they decided that they'd try transitioning to MindTouch Deki, which is a different wiki system, uh, which actually long, long ago forked from MediaWiki and then rewrote the entire thing. Uh, so they do some interesting things, some of which we really like, some of which we think are kind of weird and bizarre. Um, but, you know, they have their pluses and minuses. And one of the cool things, for instance, that Mozilla wanted for the MDC was integrating multiple languages better into a single site, which currently, you know, we don't super well do. We mostly put them in separate sites. Um, 
but there are projects that we can do. Uh, it also has WYSIWYG editing, but um, they've actually ditched a wiki markup entirely and just go straight to HTML, which has advantages and disadvantages. It makes the WYSIWYG process easier, but if you actually have to do source editing, uh, it ends up being more difficult because now you're <coughs> editing raw HTML. Um, so I've seen you know, pluses and minuses, complaints and praise uh, from people who um, have been reacting to this change. Uh, and definitely, you know, it's one of the things that we're going to want to investigate. What's good about that? What can we learn from? What can we adapt? What do we know that we don't want to do because people are having problems with it on other sites? So in general, we have you know, all these separate, separate little things, things that we want to do, people we want to talk to, um, just stuff that we want to have going on. And we have all these different ways of communicating with people. We have the wikis. We have both a MediaWiki.org, uh, which is primarily documentation, but there's also you know, some person-to-person -person communication on it. People ask for help. Um, people you know, try to document weird uh, little things that they do. Uh, we have a bug tracker. Uh, we're using Bugzilla. Bugzilla has some issues in that it's kind of big and scary and, and frightening. Uh, but also does a lot of things. So, you know, are there ways that we can improve the bug tracker system, make it easier to use, but still keep it very capable? We have a bunch of mailing lists that people can talk on. We have IRC forums, or IRC chat rooms. We have um, unofficial help forums. There's various blogs. People are using, you know, Twitter and Identica and such. Of course, we have, you know, conferences. You know, people actually come together, such as right here, lots of folks. Hi, how's it going? Awesome. Uh, and of course, you know, people will directly email or, or otherwise contact people um, individually to work on some specific issue. Is that too much stuff? Is that not enough stuff? Do we need more channels? I don't know. But what we do want to make sure that we do is that we have clear communication. Um, one of the kind of general problems that people have is, you know, they kind of do their awesome project and then no one really looks at it. Or maybe somebody looks at it, but they don't really quite comment on it. So we want to make sure that stuff actually gets review. If somebody is, you know, wants to build something that's for Wikipedia or for one of our other sites, we need to make sure that they have a very clear go or no go uh, reaction on whether or not we'll accept it in the first place, and then once they've actually produced it, whether or not it's acceptable as it is. If there's something wrong with it, we need to let them know exactly what's wrong with it and exactly what they need to change. Otherwise, people get very frustrated. Uh, it gets um, difficult to really you know, continue on when you're not getting the feedback, when you're not seeing this activity cycle of your stuff actually getting into production. And this is something that a lot of large software projects have seen. Um, certainly I remember um, contributing a number of patches to uh, Mozilla back in the day and really having to you know, p constantly push and follow up with people to make sure that, that my patch got reviewed, that it got implemented, that it got put into production. Uh, if there was anything wrong with it, you know, I needed to actually know what was wrong so I could fix it. Um, and it took a lot of effort. And I recognize that sometimes we're not as responsive as we wish we were, and people really have to you know, come after me constantly, to uh, you know, me or Tim or one of the others, to make sure that we actually review it and fix it, and awesome stuff happens. Uh, so we want to make sure that that process is easier to happen, uh, that we're not just dropping things on the floor. Um, and we need communications for that to happen. So one open question is, maybe we need a slightly more formal process in there. Maybe we need to have you know, some specific place that people can go and say, I want to do this thing. Is it OK or not? Uh, maybe something like the Python extension proposal uh, system that you know, the Python worlds use. Uh, you know, is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. Uh, but it's something we definitely want to be thinking about. Uh, in addition, there's a problem of feature ideas or bug fixes or whatever that people really want, 
but those people aren't coders. Uh, and in the world of open source, most of the time, whoever is actually doing the coding wins. Uh, because if there's something that people want, but they're not writing the software, no one cares. Uh, we want to make sure that those things that are important actually get it paid attention to. Now, we are um, definitely trying to see a little more organization going on as far as uh, conferences, uh, you know, generally making sure that everybody kind of knows what's going on and everybody has those lines of communication open. There's a uh, MediaWiki uh, developer conference, excellent, developer conference going on Let me, in uh, Berlin in April, which let me pop up the URL to that. I don't know if you can all read it from here, but <laughs> this, this is the small URL. Oops, that didn't work. Did I, uh, yeah, I typed something wrong, didn't I? Wee! MWMeet09. There we go. So this is going to be awesome, awesome fun. It's going to be at the sea base in Berlin, which if you haven't been there, sweet! I highly recommend it. Uh, so we're not only going to have a lot of fun, but we're also, I think, going to be very productive. We're going to have, um, hopefully, most of our core developers from the Wikimedia Foundation, uh, as well as a bunch of the awesome, awesome, awesome volunteer developers throughout Europe and elsewhere um, get together, you know, knock some heads together, knock some code out, make sure that uh, we really get stuff happening. Um, so everybody, come to it. It's going to rock. And I think I had something else. Oops. Now I have to find where I left. So about like two minutes left or something. But I'm on like my last slide, so I think I'm pretty good. There we go. So we're also looking at possibly doing uh, another kind of hack fest um, near our main offices in San Francisco sometime maybe this summer or later. Uh, and we'll definitely be organizing uh, some tech stuff at the Wikimania conference, which is going to be in Buenos Aires, Argentina, in August. Uh, lots of crazy wiki stuff. Will be totally awesome. And the thing we need most is you. So we just want to make sure that you know if there's something that you want in MediaWiki and it's not there yet, keep bugging us. Don't forget. Don't think that we've forgotten you. You know, we're just we're trying to get to everybody, and we want to make sure that it happens. So keep it up, keep bugging us. You know, keep beeping me on IRC. That's what we want. And uh, I don't think there's any time for. Well, we have one minute for questions. So if there's anything really good. Awesome. What? No grammar. Can we have a grammar? <laughs> that is an excellent question. It's trying to write an offline reader and has the problem that the grammar for the markup sucks. This is sad but true. And hopefully we will find some way to improve that. It is a long standing problem. But definitely we are aware of it. And there are a number of possible ways. And we are going to make something happen on it. Yes. And I guess that's about it. So thanks, everybody, for coming.